Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 16 of AWS Zero to Hero series and in this video we will be learning about CloudWatch. This video is going to be theory plus demo like every AWS service that we are learning even today we will perform theory and we will do demo but additionally today we have two demos. So usually we are doing a single demonstration on a service, but in today's video, we need two demos so that I can explain you the concept in a very good way. So watch the video till the end. What I notice is a lot of people are actually following the theory part. They are understanding about the theory fundamental concept of what is a service and why a service, but only a few people are actually performing the demos. Now, of course, I put a lot of effort in making these demos, but if you don't do these demos at your end, you will not be able to answer the real life interview questions. In interviews, interviewers usually prefer to ask about real life scenarios, about the issues that you faced while using a service. And if you are not doing these demos at your end, then there is no way you can answer that questions. You can answer about basic questions like what is CloudWatch, but if they ask you about what issue that you have faced while using CloudWatch, then you will not be able to answer that question. So that's why follow the theory part, but along with that also do the practical demo that I'm doing. Like I told you, I take a lot of effort in making these demos each and every day to give you a lot of good content. But if you people don't do it, then you know, uh, definitely during the interviews, you will find it difficult to answer these questions. Okay, so let's quickly jump onto the topic and see what you are going to learn. So firstly, the agenda for today is to explain about the fundamentals first. So as part of fundamentals, I'll, te I'll teach you what exactly is this CloudWatch, what problem is this CloudWatch solving, and we will also learn about the different features of this CloudWatch. And then once the fundamentals are done, then we will move towards learning about all the concepts such as like, you know, uh, I'll explain you what is uh, metrics. You will try to understand uh, what 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 are alarms. Then we will uh, talk about the custom metrics. So we will talk about few concepts and uh, we will head towards the demonstrations. And there will be two demos today, like I mentioned you. So the first demo would be on using the default metrics of AWS. I'll show you how to send out alarms. We will use uh, an email address and uh, we will perform a demo on CPU utilization. So the first demo is going to be if there is an EC2 instance, uh, how do you configure alarms for the CPU utilization? If the EC2 instance exceeds, let's say 50% or 40% of the CPU, then how can you configure the alarm and how can you send the notification? depending upon this metrics. And the second video is going to be on the custom metrics. So again, I'll tell you what is custom metrics, but this second video is going to be very, very uh, interesting because you'll find very less content on the custom metrics, how to configure them, how to write uh, application uh, that triggers the custom metrics. So we'll talk about that one. So this is going to be a lengthy video. So I don't want to waste any time and quickly start the video with the understanding of CloudWatch. Okay, first things first. What exactly is this CloudWatch? So you can split this word into two parts. One is cloud and the second thing is watch. So what is CloudWatch? CloudWatch is basically a person who is watching the activities on cloud. It is a service which is watching activities on cloud. So you can consider uh, CloudWatch as a gatekeeper, right? So what is CloudWatch? CloudWatch is basically a gatekeeper for AWS cloud, or you can consider it as a watchman for AWS cloud because it is watching the activities on AWS cloud. Now, what kind of activities that CloudWatch watch? It watch most of the activities that you are performing on the cloud. For example, you are creating EC2 instances or you are uploading some content onto S3 buckets or you know you are interacting uh, with these resources. Okay, or you are creating any, any kind of resource on AWS. You can find these activities logged with AWS CloudWatch. So you can go to this AWS CloudWatch service 
and you can ask this AWS CloudWatch service, hey, tell me what happened on my cloud today. For example, let's say you have a secure property. Okay, what you usually do to this secure property, you have a watchman or you have a gatekeeper to this secure property, right? And you can ask this gatekeeper, hey, what happened when I'm not around? So when I am not inside this secure property or when I am not watching things happening in this secure property, can you tell me what are the things that are happening? Exactly in the same way, you can ask this CloudWatch because it's a gatekeeper of AWS. Hey, CloudWatch, tell me what activities that happened on today on my AWS account. So as other AWS services, CloudWatch is also an AWS service. You can go to the page of CloudWatch, like you can navigate to AWS CloudWatch service and you can track all the activities, right? So I'll show you that when we do the demo and when we uh, go to the CloudWatch page, you will understand this in a much better way. But at this point of time, just understand the CloudWatch as a gatekeeper. It will be a perfect word even to explain your interviewer. If someone asks you what is CloudWatch, you can tell that CloudWatch is a gatekeeper for AWS, which will help you in monitoring alerting, reporting and logging, right? So what are the four primary things? Of course, there are other things that I'll talk in the next couple of minutes. But when someone asks you in an interview, what is CloudWatch? You can tell them that CloudWatch is basically a gatekeeper for my AWS account, which will help in understanding and implementing the monitoring, alerting, reporting and logging. Using these features of CloudWatch, you can keep track of activities that are happening on your AWS account, right? So this will be the theoretical definition. If you want to explain someone what is CloudWatch, this is the best way of explaining them what is CloudWatch. Now, let me tell you what are the features, right? On a high level, of course, when we do the demos, you will understand the user interface. You will understand how exactly this works. But on a very high level, what are the fundamental advantages of using CloudWatch. So if you use CloudWatch, you can implement, of course, the very first thing that I told you, uh, sorry. Yeah, so you can implement monitoring. So monitoring is the very first thing and the very biggest advantage of AWS CloudWatch because these days monitoring is a very, very important activity for DevOps engineers, right? Whether it's your Kubernetes applications monitoring or whether it's your infrastructure monitoring, CloudWatch basically plays a critical role in the infrastructure monitoring, but still you can also do your application monitoring with CloudWatch. So monitoring is one of the primary things that AWS CloudWatch is doing. Second thing is it will allow you to get the real life metrics. Now, what is real life metrics? So CloudWatch can help you in telling you that, okay, what are the metrics that you are reaching on your AWS services? For example, what can this metrics be? I'll give you a very basic example. Like, you know, if you are not familiar with these words called monitoring metrics, I'll make it very, very simple. Metrics is nothing but you can say that, okay, uh, when you are using EC2 instance, a metrics can be how many API requests, okay, how many API requests did my application inside the EC2 instance receive? Or the other metrics can be during last 30 minutes, what was the CPU utilization on my AWS EC2 instance? Or what was the memory consumption during the last 30 minutes on my EC2 instance? So this can be metrics. A matrix is something that will help you understand about the utilization or it will help you understand about details of your AWS services, right? If you want to understand about your AWS services and if you want to talk to people about that uh, things that you're watching, then you use metrics, right? So metrics will be easy way to communicate. That's it. So you can simply tell people that Hey, can you give me metrics uh, regarding the CPU utilization? Can you give me metrics regarding the memory utilization or memory consumption? Or you can say that, can you give me the metrics regarding the API calls that my application received, right? And the third thing, alarms. Now, 
metrics and alarm are very closely associated okay so for basic example i can tell you this thing so you can collect a metrics for cpu utilization okay let's say you have collected a metrics for cpu utilization and you told someone that okay just go to CloudWatch and get me the metrics for CPU utilization and tell me what was the CPU utilization. So that person just went to CloudWatch, saw this metric for CPU utilization. Okay. So for metric, you have a dashboard. Uh, so he goes to that uh, specific metrics and tells you that, okay, there was 80% consumption of CPU. Next time he'll say there was 90%. Next time he'll say that there was 100%. Okay. You have collected the metrics. And you are getting this information, but sometimes you have to take actions on this metrics, right? What kind of actions? See, if your EC2 instance is going to 100% utilization, then your EC2 instance will be not usable. If your EC2 instance is already consuming 100%, definitely you cannot use this EC2 instance anymore, right? So sometimes your responsibility will be not only to collect metrics, but your responsibility will be to take actions on the metrics outcome. So you can say that, hey, CloudWatch, if your metrics for CPU utilization shows 80%, then send out a notification to this particular email address. Or you can say, hey, CloudWatch, if your CPU utilization reach 60%, then just send out an alarm saying that, hey, uh, be careful your CPU utilization is already 60%. So this is metrics and this notifications that you are sending is through alarms. So that's why metrics and alarms are very, very closely associated. Now, when I do the demonstration, it will be 100% clear to you on what exactly metrics and alarm. I mean, what is metrics, what is alarms and how you can use both of them together. Okay, so the next thing is it can also give you log insights. What is log insights? Log insights basically means that it can provide you a log saying that, hey, uh, this person or, uh, you know, this specific uh, service tried to access your EC2 instance. This specific service tried to access your S3 bucket at this point of time. So you can log the activities and some of these loggings happen automatically. Like I told you, AWS CloudWatch is capable of doing a lot of activities out of the box on your cloud. That means CloudWatch has default capabilities of all of these things, but you can additionally enhance it as well, right? For example, Kubernetes has a lot of capabilities, but if you feel something is missing, you enhance the capabilities. Similarly, using custom metrics concept, you can also enhance AWS CloudWatch. Perfect. So what is logging? Logging is basically a capability of providing you an insight of which service is accessing the other service. For example, in last class, I used EC2 instance to connect to AWS code deploy, right? Now that activity will be recorded in AWS CloudWatch. And if someone goes to the CloudWatch and looks for these logs, they will easily understand that one of your EC2 instance tried to communicate with code deploy service and it will provide you exact timestamp of when this happened. Perfect. Then the other very important feature is custom metrics. I've been talking about custom metrics, right? So basic example or important example is we talked about CPU utilization, right? So CPU utilization is a default metrics. By default, CloudWatch tracks the CPU utilization as a metrics for your EC2 instances. But CloudWatch does not track the memory utilization. So if you want to get the memory utilization, then you have to enhance CloudWatch Enhance CloudWatch means you have to send this custom metrics to CloudWatch because CloudWatch is not tracking this metrics. Someone has to send that metrics to CloudWatch. So in such cases, you can do custom metrics and using custom metrics, you can also track your own application, right? You can track the memory of your instance. You can track a lot of things on CloudWatch. Number six. So the number six is cost optimization. When you move to AWS, one of the primary things, I told you this a lot of times, there are two primary reasons why people move to cloud. One is of course, making things ease. That means to reduce the maintenance 
and to improve the security. That is the primary goal. If someone is moving towards cloud, then this is that first thing that they will see. Did we reduce the maintenance and did we improve the security? If any of these things is not meeting, then they will directly go back to their on-premises. And the second important thing is the cost optimization. So cost optimization is nothing but reducing the cost of your AWS. And CloudWatch plays a critical role in reducing the cost optimization. We will do a video on this one as well. That will be day 18. Okay. So you can wait till then because I have to explain about a concept called Lambda functions before I explain you about the cost optimization. It will be unfair if I talk about cloud opt, uh, cloud cost optimization now because I did not teach you about Lambda functions. But this demonstration is going to be very, very important. You can add this to your resume. Every company does this cloud cost optimization. And the final thing is it will also help you in scaling. So you can ask me, Abhishek, how does CloudWatch help in cost optimization and scaling? So CloudWatch cannot directly perform the cost optimization or CloudWatch does not, I mean, cannot directly perform the scaling, but it can integrate with other services like for cost optimization because CloudWatch is a gatekeeper, right? So it knows what activities are happening, like who is entering the cloud, who is creating what kind of resources on your cloud. So you can integrate it with Lambda functions or some other services and you can perform the desired activity. Now, Lambda functions is capable of doing a lot of things, but it does not have the information of what activities are going inside the cloud, right? And CloudWatch has that capability because it's a gatekeeper. So being a gatekeeper, it can integrate with serverless functions like Lambda functions, and it can help you in reducing the cloud cost. It can help you in identifying the resources that someone has created on your cloud and they are not using it. So such things, CloudWatch, can help with the combination of other services and even scaling is the same thing, right? So it can also help you in scaling because it's a gatekeeper. It has idea of what kind of activities are happening. So if your CPU utilization is already 80%, then your CloudWatch can inform auto scaling group saying that, hey, see that one of the instance is already at 80%. So I'll send you one notification when it reaches 80% and because your auto scaling group, then scale the EC2 instances to the next level. So increase one more EC2 instance. So that way, CloudWatch can integrate with other services and perform cost optimization and auto scaling. Now, practically, it will be impossible to do all of these demos. So that's why I have chosen three very important ones and three things that are very much real life. Or you can relate when you join a AWS job or you know if you're performing cloud activities or if you are a DevOps engineer, what are three projects that are very helpful for you and I've taken out that three projects. So that will be, firstly, we will do the real life metrics thing. Then we will do the custom metrics thing and then we will do the cost optimization, right? Log insights, I can quickly show you how does that work. And to cover all the topics, I'll integrate this real life metrics with alarms so that I'll cover real life metrics I'll cover alarms, I'll cover custom metrics and cost optimization will be covered in the next video. That means once I teach you Lambda functions, I'll cover the cost optimization as well. So that way we will cover a lot of things on AWS CloudWatch. How is the theory part? I hope you have enjoyed the theory part and you understood about each and every concept of it. Now you can also go to the AWS CloudWatch documentation and you can just revise what all things that I have taught you. Once you revise things, you will get that clear picture that okay, Abhishek has covered all the points and there is also a GitHub page. You know that we maintain GitHub page for the course that we are doing. The link is in the description. You can search for Abhishek Viramala, DevOps, sorry, AWS Zero to Hero uh, GitHub repository or you can check the link in the description and you can read the interview questions and theory from there as well. Perfect. So now let's switch gears and move to the demonstration part so that we will execute two demos on AWS CloudWatch. Okay, so now I've logged into my AWS account and I'll go to the search bar, search for CloudWatch. So this is the service called CloudWatch and what AWS says about it is it helps you monitor resources and applications. Exactly what we have learned in the theory part, right? We learned in the theory part that it's a gatekeeper 
that allows you to monitor resources and applications. Perfect. And what are the top features according to AWS? Logs, metrics, alarms, dashboards, and service lens. We'll ignore service lens for now. We'll focus on the other four top features, logs, metrics, alarms, and dashboards. Click on CloudWatch. To the left side, you will again find the features, list of features that it supports. All the features, not just the important ones. But we'll start with the logs. You will understand how much powerful AWS CloudWatch is in next 10 minutes. So the next 10 minutes of video, you will, if you are watching the CloudWatch or if you have heard about CloudWatch for the first time, you'll be amazed by the capabilities that it has and number of activities that it does on your cloud account, even without you configuring anything. So firstly, let's start with log groups. And when you click on log groups, basically log groups is nothing but CloudWatch automatically creates a group for your logs, right? So what kind of group is it? For example, uh, today you have created a service in, um, I mean, you have created an application in code build, for example, or you have created a project in code build. All the activities that are happening in that project, CloudWatch automatically creates a log group and it will log all the information inside that log group only so that it will be very easy for you if you have 100 projects inside code build for each project it will create a log group and tomorrow if you want to go to a specific project you can directly go to log group of that project and you can see activities if the log groups are not created then what will happen let's say if this one and this one are inside the same thing you will never understand the differentiation but what is inside this one and how AWS CloudWatch has created this log group. So if you have watched our previous videos on day 14, what I've done is I have created a project inside code build, right? So automatically when I've created the project, CloudWatch was watching for the cloud build service. It was tracking the activities that are happening in the code build, right? Because it's a gatekeeper, it keeps tracking the activities. So it understood that someone has created a sample Python flash service, right? And what it did is it logged everything that was happening with that project. For example, you know, if you go to the latest log stream, okay, if you click on this one, so it says that typically this many times I have built the project, okay? And everything is logged here without my uh, consent or, you know, without not consent, but without me configuring anything. So if you go to this one and you will notice that it gives you all the information. What was your Docker file? How did you build it? What was the entire log of the build process, right? So the entire log of the build process is available here. So unknowingly, let's say even you have deleted that project, you can still come back to CloudWatch and you can get the information from CloudWatch and it can clearly give you the information like what was the build log for last one minute? What was the build log for last 12 hours? So last 12 hours, I did not build it, right? So that's why I'll not have any information. So it says the build was successful. Uh, you know, your passwords were encrypted here. Then if you scroll down, it also tells that, you know, this was your Docker file. This many stages were there in your Docker file. And finally, what happened to your build? Did it succeed or fail? You might be thinking that, okay, successful uh, things are recorded. If you scroll down, even the failed ones, right? All the information is recorded here. Go back to the log group again. And if you scroll down, this is the first build that we have built, okay? And if you remember on day 14, we got error related to pip, okay? We were using, oh, sorry, error related to the requirements.txt. So that error should be there. If you scroll down, you will notice that this build was failed because it could not open the requirements.txt file. So the same error is recorded here. Now you understand the power of it, right? So it can record all your activities. If you go to code build, what will happen? In code build, you can find information. But once you delete that project in the code build, or let's say, you know, after six months or after a certain time, you want to still keep the track of this information, then you can just go to CloudWatch not exactly six months, I'm just giving an example. So after a while, if you want to go back and if you want to get that information, CloudWatch will help you. It can also give you log insights, but for that you have to write some queries. Uh, we'll come back here, uh, not in this video, but we'll come back and explain. I'll explain you how to write this query and how to get the information 
related to your logs and get some insights. Okay, so you can use this log groups and get some insights from the log insights feature. Now, if you feel that this is a very powerful feature, the next thing will show it will definitely amaze you. That is the metrics feature. Like I told you, what is a metrics? Metrics is something that will help you to collect some information. It can be information related to your AWS EC2 instance uh, CPU. It can be information related to your AWS uh, EC2 instance uh, disk utility, uh, disk usage, or you know your disk uh, output input bytes. Right, this kind of information, AWS CloudWatch will automatically track all this information for you using the metrics. It says that it has 1036 default metrics that it is tracking all the time on your AWS account. That means every five minutes, every 10 minutes, it is collecting all the information from all these services on your AWS account with this 1034 metrics, right? So these are the services and each service, there are these many number of metrics. If you go to one of the service, you will easily understand what exactly uh, these type of metrics are. But looking at this number, you will understand how much powerful is AWS CloudWatch. For example, easy understanding. Let me go to uh, EC2 dashboard. Okay, so here you will notice that these are all the default dashboards it has created. But before dashboards, I think I should show you the metrics itself. So it has these many metrics. Okay. If we go to one of the metrics, let's say per instance metrics. It has categorized for us to easily, easily navigate. So now see here, what are the different type of metrics that are available here? So CPU utilization for all the EC2 instances in this AWS account you can get the CPU utilization metrics. That means you can get the CPU utilization for last one hour for this specific instance, for example. Okay, this instance is down. So that's why I don't have CPU utilization here. But if this instance was up, then you can simply come here and you can track the information using the metrics called CPU utilization that, okay, for last five minutes, how was my EC2 instance performing? For last 10 minutes, how was my EC2 instance performing? And how are you getting this information? Because CloudWatch is constantly getting this information from the EC2 instances. So basically you can understand that CloudWatch is going to EC2 instance asking it, okay, what is your CPU utilization? Okay, let me collect that data. What is your CPU, uh, CPU utilization uh, service or EC2 instance too? Let me collect that information. So it is doing that job for you on your AWS account 24 by seven. So even if you are not around, you can just say, okay, just give me last three days. How was my EC2 instance metrics for CPU utilization or for CPU credit usage? So exploring that 1036 metrics is also a very, very big thing, right? Even if you spend a couple of days, even if you spend a lot of time, you will still not able to figure out how many different number of metrics that it is collecting. Of course, as a DevOps engineer, you might not need all of the metrics. You just need the metrics that is helpful for your project. Okay. For example, for your project, CPU utilization is one of the important things. Then yeah, you can uh, watch for the CPU utilization metrics. For someone, network input, network output might be an important metrics. So they'll focus on that one. And here you can also select which kind of EC2 instance that you want. Now let's take an example instead of talking about this uh, from the console, what I'll do is I'll create an EC2 instance. Okay. To make it easy, let's create an EC2 instance and let's discuss from there. So I'll create an EC2 instance here, launch instance, cloud watch, demo. Okay. And what I'll try to do is Let's go to a operating system. Let's choose Ubuntu. Let me select this one as T2 micro. Okay. Key value pair. I'll choose the one that I already have. Let me see if the public IP is enabled. Perfect. Now let me create this instance. And I have written a Python application for making this demo much, much easier. I'll increase, decrease the CPU and I'll show you how this information is collected in this dashboard. Usually increasing and decreasing the CPU is not that easy task. 
so my python script that i have written will help you you can also use it for your demo purposes right but it's not recommended to use in the production perfect this is the instance it's still pending it will be created in a while but before that everything that i'm talking today is available here you can just search for github.com right you can just go to my github url and there is a folder called day 16 and inside day 16 you have everything so these are the two demos that we are going to perform the theory of the demos is available here i mean not the demo sorry the theory part that i've explained is available here and if you go to one of these demos let's say default matrix demo that we are going to do today at this point the cpu spike.py so this python script is going to increase and decrease the cpu usage on this ec2 instance and i'll track that matrix information on this cloud watch right so that will give us a very clear understanding because i have kept on telling you that cloud watch collects the information and it will give you the dashboards it will help you in creating alarms it will send you notifications but let me show you practically then you will understand how does a devops engineer actually use this metrics so for now i'm just selecting all metrics i'm not doing anything now let's go to the ec2 instance let's log into it okay i hope you are still seeing the right screen let me just verify perfect so you're watching the right screen now ssh minus i perfect so click on yes button and now i've logged into that ec2 instance definitely because you have just started if you use the top process the cpu and everything is very normal right because there are nothing no other processes are running on the ec2 instance so everything will look smooth now what i'll do is i'll go back here okay let me go back here to the cloud watch go to the ec2 and let's track the metrics of the ec2 instance that we just created okay across all instance select this this thing what do you want cpu utilization i just have one ec2 instance so that's why i selected across all ec2 instances uh, if you want to track instance by instance you can just go back and you can select instance per instance feature option so i just have one ec2 instance so i'm not much worried and usually in organizations you will select this option only because you want to track cpu utilization of all the instances so right now it is not displaying anything right your cloudwatch graph is empty select some metrics because i just created the ec2 instance so i have selected the cp uh, this one i selected last one hour there is no activity that is logged now go back to your instance click on your instance and if you select your particular instance there is monitoring tab here okay go to the monitoring tab and here you can find all this information and all of this information is related to cloud watch only right this is just for easy understanding ec2 instances have provided this information here but if you click on this one like let's if you expand one of these things you will be you know getting this information these are cloud watch metrics only okay so this information is collected from that right what i wanted to show you is there is an option where you can control how frequently you want to send information to cloudwatch by default ec2 instance it depends on service to service by default ec2 instance sends metrics every 5 minutes okay so this cpu utilization metrics if you go back here this metrics is currently sent every 5 minutes but what you can do is you can go to manage detail monitoring because i want to show you this real time enable this feature and the metrics is sent every 1 minute okay so this will help us to immediately send the metrics and i can show you in the aws cloud watch console okay still there is no change now i'll go to my this particular thing i'll open a file called nano cpu spike dot py what are we doing we are trying to increase the cpu and we are trying to see if cloud watch is working fine or not if it is reflecting here or not okay so let me copy this one cpu spike dot py 
I think it took me more than couple of hours to write this one because initially when I was writing it, the spike was not meeting my expectations. So I had to explore a lot of things and finally I got this one. Okay. So let me save this. No, don't worry. Why am I using Nano? You can use your own, your style of editor. I just used uh, Nano. Uh, you can choose Vim or you can choose VI. You can op open it in any of your favorite uh, editor. Perfect. Now I have copied and see if there is anything in the import statement. There is nothing. So I don't have to import anything. Just the time it is available out of the box. I just need to verify if I have Python 3 or not. Perfect. Python 3 is also available. Now let's run this program, right? Python 3 CPU spike.py. Ah, okay. So there was a typing error that I've done. Uh, let me delete this one. Let me recreate CPU spike dot. If the file is big, you can click on the raw button and you can uh, paste from there, which is a good practice. But this is a very small file, so that's okay for me. Save. Perfect. And now let me rerun that one. Python 3 CPU spike.py. Simulating CPU spike at 80%. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to increase the CPU spike. And what I'll do is initially I'll take this spike. I'll try to keep it to 50%, 60%. And eventually this script, if it is not stopped, it will also take your laptops or EC2 instance CPU spike to 100% as well. So if you are using this program of mine, make sure that you use it carefully. Okay. Because this is a CPU spike generator. Of course, if you are creating EC2 instance for this specific purpose, then there is no, no problem at all because this is a, just a demo instance that you have created. So there will be no problem. But if you are running this program of mine on any of your office related uh, virtual machines or your personal laptop or something, be very careful because if sometimes if CPU goes beyond a particular thing, like let's say if your CPU consumption is 100%, then your laptop or your virtual machine will be unresponsive. So use it on a demo EC2 instance only. Now it will take one minute to report the information back. I think we just started, so we might not see that. Let's refresh and see. Yeah, so till now the metrics information is not collected. So first of all, that information will be collected here. I can change this to one second so that it will be more real time. Oh yeah, see it started collecting and what did it say? The CPU was spiked to 50% at this point of time. Okay, so the CPU spike that you are seeing at this point of time is 50% and my program is still running. And as it keeps going, the CPU spike will keep increasing and the information will also be collected here. Okay, so all EC2 instances, CPU utilization, if I refresh, of course, CloudWatch will take a little time to get all the information or else you can go back as well. Uh, let's go to this feature called EC2 for instance metrics and we can select the instance that we are looking at. What is the instance ID? Instance ID is 84A at the end. To make it easy, let's select that instance only. 84A, right? CPU utilization metrics, right? I want to get the CPU utilization and uh, I want to get it on the instance 84A. This one. And this is the CPU utilization metrics, right? So see, the spike has started. Even you can see here, what does it say? At this point of time, the CPU utilization is 0 0.7. That means 70% of the CPU is utilized. Let's see if it is same here. Right, we should see the same metrics here as well. Let me refresh this one. Yes, so it started going up to 100% as well. Now the CPU utilization, the CloudWatch has received metrics till 70% and now it went to 100% and after a while, you will see that on the CloudWatch as well. So let's refresh and see. Yeah, so this CloudWatch metrics, it takes some time to reflect. 
So for now it is just at 0 0.77 and what you can do here is keep refreshing. You can get the information in different types as well. If you want, you can get that in the pie charts. You can get that in uh, bar or you can get that information in lines. So for some people, if you feel that this is more uh, easy to understand, you can get the information here as well. Okay, so now this will take a little time uh, to get the information or I can change this matrix directly to maximum and uh, it will show you immediately. Okay, so why the reason is in organizations we will use average metrics. So what average does is see sometimes what will happen is CPU goes to 100% and immediately it will come back, right? But in organization we will look for average of metrics. That means if the CPU utilization is at 70 percentage for one minute okay then only report it as an issue if cpu just goes for 100 percent and immediately within fraction of seconds if it comes back to 10 percent or 20 percent you don't have to like it's not a serious issue of course it's an issue but it's not a serious issue but if your cpu is constantly hitting 100 percent 60 percent 70 percent for five minutes 10 minutes then it's a serious issue for you right so that's why it you can control this one do you want maximum in the last five minutes or do you want average in the last five minutes? So it says maximum here in the last five minutes is 85. Right. Whereas if you change it to average, you might get a different result. Okay. Let's say average of 30 or uh, not 30 seconds. Let's say average of five minutes. Average of 15 minutes. Okay. So if you keep changing this one, this variable will change. So average of last 30 days it has changed to 33 the reason is you know you are playing with this parameter now in organizations we'll usually use the average parameter only perfect so now we got this information we collected the metrics from aws instance and we are watching this information in the cloud watch but now what we should do okay you got this information but you have to act on this information right one of the job roles of devops engineers is when you see this kind of issues you have to immediately report this kind of issues okay so how do you do that you can configure alarms on cloudwatch got it so with metrics we collected all the information we got to know that okay one of the ec2 instance that uh, ec2 instance here now i have to immediately go and uh, see cpu spike simulation completed now my program has come back to normal now if you look at cpu it will be zero again because i have simulated through my program and after a while i have terminated the simulation but for five minutes or for a couple of minutes the cpu was at 100 percent if you are doing this on your production servers then it will be a huge risk because for a couple of minutes no cpus are active so no processor will take place on your production machine so definitely do not use it now the important thing that i told you in the theory part is okay you have simulated the metrics but how to act on the metrics is the one that alarm decides okay so in cloudwatch you have an option called alarm right and using this alarm you can say that okay if the cpu has spiked to 50 percent okay if the cpu spike has reached 50 percent then send me a notification give me an email and even if I am online, offline, there are support engineers, there are production engineers, there are uh, production management team, right? Or SRE engineers, DevOps engineers. You can watch for this metrics. If you are online, offline, you are working or not working, you will get a notification on your mobile. And if it is a critical thing, right? Then you have to immediately log into your laptop and immediately act on it. So for engineers not to be active 24 by 7, you can make use of alarms and this alarms will notify you when something is going wrong in your critical systems so how to create an alarm basically click on create alarm okay select kind of metrics that you want for the alarm now what kind of metrics do i want i want metrics related to ec2 instance click on the ec2 instance now click on across all instances or per instance metrics let's go per instance metrics because we know what kind of I just have one EC2 instance, so I can use that. And what is that matrix? CPU utilization. Search for it. Okay. Which one was that? Uh, I think this one, right? AF1. No, 84A. So go there. 84A. Where is that thing? 
eight four eight. Like it has all the EC two instances that terminated uh, that were there. Everything is available unless you delete that information. Okay, so I've selected. Now click on select metrics. So now it is saying that okay, what kind of alarm do you want to configure? Here you can say metrics is CPU utilization. Instance is this one. Do you want average or maximum? Because this is demo. Let's select on maximum. Okay, because we can't wait for so much time in the demo, right? If you are doing this in your organization, select it as average and keep average time for five minutes. So you will get this email or you will get this message. You can configure Slack messages. You can configure emails. You can configure different kind of things. The easiest one is email. And usually organizations have average. It says that if five minutes you find CPU spike, send me an email. One of us will log in and we will try to see what is the issue, or we will tell to the concerned development teams that something is going wrong. But here, for the purpose of demo, let's say maximum, maximum of one minute. Okay, so every one minute. CloudWatch will watch for that EC2 instance. Okay, CloudWatch will get the metrics from that EC2 instance. And if in one minute, okay, within that one minute that it is watching, if the maximum is reaching a specific point, you can configure that specific point. Okay, so what do you, how much number do you want to configure? You can say, let's say 50% only. Okay, so if the CPU is reaching 50% in one minute that you are watching, okay, for every one minute you are watching it and any time if you find the CPU spike reach 50%, okay, greater or equal, then you can click on the next button and here you can configure what kind of activities you want. How do you want to send out notifications? So in AWS to send out notifications, we will use a service called as SNS topics, simple notification service topic. Okay, so we haven't reached to SNS, but for now, let's understand that SNS is a service that is simple notification service and using SNS, you can send out emails, you can send out any kind of information. Create a new topic, provide name of topic, cloud watch topic, okay? And here provide the email address. I've created an email address called testing. Uh, sorry, I forgot that email address. Just give me a second, I'll copy paste it. So uh, this is the email address that I've created and pretty much this is a very new email account, account. Uh, I just created for this one and what was the okay I'll provide this information in the cloud watch. Okay now click on create topic. So the topic will be created. What is topic topic is basically the notification that you want to send to what uh, when do you want to trigger this notification okay and uh, who are the receivers of that notification is basically provided in the topic. Now I don't want to select any other thing. Click on the next button and what kind of message do you want? For example, provide the name of the alarm. Say that danger EC2 instance CPU reached 50% or instead of danger you can say priority. Okay, now you can provide any custom message here. If you want, you can provide anything. Uh, hey team, uh, for example, usually in organizations, you provide something like this. Hey team, this is an automated uh, notification from CloudWatch to let you know that your instance CPU has spiked to 50% or above, please take the necessary action, right? So you can type something like this and usually this is how organizations will put. And click on the next button. Now you can see that this is configured. If the CPU is above or less than 50%, sorry, uh, CPU spike goes above 50% or reaches 50%, then the CPU notification will be sent out. Now click on create alarm. Perfect. Alarm is created. You can click on the refresh button, but at this point of time, your alarm is not activated, right? So click on this one button. You will understand why it says that insufficient data, right? That is because you haven't activated from the email address. So if you go and refresh your email page, you will either go to the spam as well. So in the spam, you will see a notification from AWS saying that please approve this. Okay, so 
you have provided the email address in AWS, but from the email address, you have to confirm it. So click on the confirm subscription. Now you will see that the CloudWatch alarms are activated, right? Now you can go back to the CloudWatch and if you refresh again, you will see one thing is activated. See, click on this button, the right button here, this one, this is in green color. So here the status is okay. Now it is activated, but you will not receive any notification at this point of time because the alarm is not triggered. So we will trigger the alarm from our terminal. How do we trigger? We have that program, right? So LS, this is the program. Python 3. CPU spike. Now this will start increasing the CPU usage. It will simulate the CPU usage increase. And after a while, your CloudWatch alarm will get triggered from the metrics, right? And this alarm will send out the notification. Let's wait for it. So meanwhile, you can keep tracking this information here. Go to the alarms and click on the alarm. You will find the metrics, right? What kind of metrics is it tracking? And you can get the information of the metrics. What is happening here? See, till now, this is at the low level only. This was the spike that we got previously. And now it is still here. So it hasn't reached to the point of red line. Once it reaches the red line, the CPU utilization, then you will send the notification. It will send the notification for you. Let's see. Still, there is no luck. Still, the program is running. After a while, this program will increase the CPU limit and you will see the notification. Okay. Till that time, you have to be very patient. And one thing that I would like to say is this program that I've written. Okay. So it will definitely spike the CPU. If it sometimes it might reach to 40%, 50%, 60%. In my case, it can go to 100%. In your case, it can go to 80% only. Uh, that is the reason why I've kept the spike limit or the threshold for the alarm as 50. Okay. So the reason why I've put the threshold for the alarm as 50 is because on different instances, this script might work in different way. Okay. So I haven't written it that robust that it works same across all the uh, distributions, but at least it will spike the CPU for 50% for sure. See, now the CPU has spiked it. We reached that limit. Now the alarm should have triggered. Okay. So how do we see that? Either you can go to your mailbox. Okay. So again, wait for a minute. This mail will take some time to receive or, you know, you, you might uh, receive it after a minute. You might receive it in the spam folder. So you have to be patient and you have to watch for it. The other thing that you can do, meanwhile, let's say you are not receiving the notification. You can go to the SNS topic. Okay, search for SNS, simple notification service. And here, okay, you can verify that everything is perfect or not. There are four topics. Uh, you can ignore all the other things. CloudWatch topic, click on that and see here, this should be confirmed status. Okay, so meanwhile, just verify this thing. Uh, if this is not in confirmed status, then your email address is not configured well. If it is configured well, then you have to wait for a little while and you will get the notification eventually. Like just wait for 30 seconds. Promotions, did it go here? Yes. So it went to the promotions tab. If you go to the promotions tab, see the email is received at this point of time. This is a fresh email, 7.44 p.m. And the time is also 7.45 p.m. So watch for all the inboxes. Do not uh, complain that Abhishek, I have not received uh, this thing. You will definitely receive, but check for spam folder, check for promotions folder, all the folders that are available and wait for a couple of minutes. So see, you have got a very clear information. So description, hey team, this is an automated notification from CloudWatch to let you know that the CPU spike is 50% or above. Exactly what I've written. And here it will provide you the details as well. Like it will give you the details of why this uh, CloudWatch has triggered. It says that, okay, uh, at this point of time, there was a CPU spike and because the metrics has watched, have triggered the alarm. Perfect. So this is the demonstration about the CPU spike. That is, we use the default metrics out of the box metrics and we triggered an alarm for you to understand how CloudWatch is used in real time examples. So I explained you about the log groups. I explained you how does this log groups work and how you can uh, trigger 
uh, sorry, how you can gather information from log groups, what happened with one of your service previously. Then we explored the default metrics. I just explored one metrics. I just talked about CPU metrics. There are 1036 other metrics. So imagine how much powerful this AWS CloudWatch is. So you can write n number of scripts. You can write n number of alarms in your AWS. And that's what SRE team or production engineers also do. They'll create a lot of metrics. And in some companies, DevOps engineers also do the same thing. Then you might be thinking, what is dashboards? Abhishek, you have not explored dashboards. Dashboard is the same thing. Like, you know, I just created a dashboard for the alarm. And, uh, you know, if you create dashboard, you will find the same thing. So you can create dashboard and you can track a particular metrics or group of metrics that you want. Okay. Do you want to track that metrics in a uh, line format or do you want to track that metrics in the uh, pie charts format? And here you can provide one metrics or bunch of metrics. So we have technically created dashboard for the purpose of uh, alarm kind of thing. Right. So we have covered dashboards we have covered alarms we have covered uh, metrics only thing that i did not cover because the video is getting extremely lengthy is the custom metrics i have prepared the script for it i have everything ready but i think we should not include that in this video because it's getting extremely lengthy i'll make a different video probably a follow up video or sometime later in the aws 30 days course regarding this custom metrics I've prepared everything. Everything is ready. I'll show you how to populate the custom metrics onto the AWS CloudWatch. Don't worry. This will be covered sometime in the series. I don't want to break the flow of the series. So I'll see if I have to do it tomorrow or if I have to do it somewhere between the other videos of the series or at the end of the series. But everything is ready from my side. So there is no problem. Even if you want, you can read through the script. Possibly if you understand, you can try it. But yeah, it's slightly tricky. So I'll implement it. So this is the video for today. I hope you found the video informative and definitely please try to do the demo from your side. Only then you will get the real life experience and expertise. I tried one metrics on AWS CloudWatch out of 1036 metrics. It's your turn. You can pick up any other metrics and try the same experiment. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can use the GitHub repository for the demo purpose. See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye.